Hey guys, what's up? I hope you all enjoyed the video that I did on the Steam Deck review. I definitely appreciated all of the reviews and comments that we got. And well, I wanted to follow that up with another video on Linux gaming, specifically the Razer 15 laptops. Now looking at both of these systems, you can see that Razer doesn't really change their product lines a whole lot year to year. The 2018 looks almost identical to the 2021 version, with the only exception of the IR camera that's featured on the 2021. The bezels, the lighting, the trackpad, everything else appears to be almost identical. Except maybe my MTP servers. The 2018 edition is running an Intel i7-8750H, which is a 2.2 gigahertz processor, 16 gigs of RAM, which was an upgrade at the time, half a terabyte of M2 storage, a 1080p 144 hertz refresh rate monitor, and a GTX 1060. Now, a GTX 1060 is not gonna wow anybody in current age, especially when going against the 2021. Now, as for the 2021 version, it's running an Intel 11800H. It's a 2.3 gigahertz processor. It's running 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte M2 storage, and an RTX 3070. So a current gen for at least now GPU. Now the monitor is the 165 hertz uh, refresh rate. I could have gotten the 360. It's a 1440p monitor either way, and I didn't really care, so I went with the 165. Now, when we're talking a way too broad spectrum of a synopsis, the 2021, because it's a 3070, runs most games well on high settings. Now, it is a laptop GPU, laptop power, so it depends on if you're on battery or plugged in, but overall, I've been very pleased with it. 2018, being a 1060, it runs most games well on medium. And I say most games, but we're probably talking about the 75%. Anything above that, as we'll discuss here in a moment, really starts to see performance impacts no matter what graphical settings you are on. All right, so before I get into the nitty gritty on the performance between these two systems, as well as running on top of Linux, let's talk about the trials and tribulations of getting Linux running on these. With the success of the Steam Deck, I thought the first try should be Steam OS. Steam OS 3 runs on top of the Steam Deck, and unfortunately, Steam OS 3 is not available for PC install. There are some Linux distros that base themselves off of it loosely, but it's not pure Steam OS 3. And well, beginning of July, we're still waiting on an official release from Valve. So I figured I'll install Steam OS 2. People have had successes with that. And uh, well, it didn't go well at first. I found that multiple USB drives of mine were just incompatible with the installer. You would only find this once you booted into it, and it took me a lot of tries until I found the proper USB drive that would allow the install process to finish. Next, in SteamOS, you're booted directly into big game mode. It is the legacy interface, it's not the Steam Deck interface, and it works okay, but if you don't have a wired mouse, I, in my example, I was using the trackpad at first, I couldn't navigate to the desktop easily. I couldn't click. It was a trial by fire with keyboard shortcuts until I could actually enable some of the settings I needed to to navigate freely. Additionally, because Steam relies on Proton, which is a compatibility layer to run Windows games on Linux, uh, Steam OS 2 wasn't quite highlighting that. And so it is a rather global change or it's a little more buried than I think the new Steam interfaces actually make it. So finding that, enabling that took a moment. Otherwise, all of the games actually listed as incompatible to play, but it would list as I could stream them from another system, which did not work well. So one of the cool things with Proton is it can pre-cache the Vulkan shaders when you launch a game. It helps with the render times as well as the performance of the game itself. But you can see that some of them, such as Tomb Raider, they can take quite a long time to load. So you have to be patient the first time you launch a game to load those shaders. So after installing SteamOS, I figured the next best play was installing Ubuntu or Ubuntu, however you want to pronounce it, 2004. I figured this was the most consistent platform. It has a graphical interface. I run it often for my work in a CLI only perspective. So I'm a little bit familiar with installing packages, but I wanted to see how it performed with an NVIDIA graphics card inside of it. Per my expectations, installed right away, I had no problem with any of the drivers or anything with the Razer laptop. In fact, there were plenty of third-party software if I wanted to control the Razer chroma lighting, which I didn't really care about, but I did install one just to get a default color going again. The other nice thing is with the graphical desktop version of 
Ubuntu, uh, there was actually the default NVIDIA drivers were installed. There was even a selector tool that I could change the drivers easily. So there was no concern about getting the latest NVIDIA drivers installed and going. It has a native repo, it pulls the latest files. And I think at that time I was running one of the 500 series drivers. So it was a recent driver running on this platform. Now, because I wanted to get as close as I could to SteamOS 3, I looked at Hollow ISO, which is an up and coming, there's a lot of rave reviews about its performance and how based off of SteamOS 3 it is. Unfortunately, being an Intel processor, I could not get this to successfully boot. I see that problem online. I don't believe that they've gotten past it as a recent, but I could be mistaken. It is a project to keep your eyes on. If you happen to have an AMD processor, even better, definitely try it out. So because I couldn't get Hollow ISO going, I installed Pop OS instead. It was the next best thing. It was a, another Linux distro that is more focused on gaming. And in fact, when you're doing the install, it's asking you if you have an AMD or an NVIDIA uh, driver set that it needs to load. Maybe a little more advanced than Ubuntu, but not much. So you can weigh your options if you want more of a generic stock feeling, like if you're that you know, pixel user and Android terms, or if you wanted a little bit more of an overlay and a little bit more focus on gaming, and that would be your Pop OS. So let's take a look at the actual stats. What were the baselines between the two systems running Windows? And did I close the gap at all running any of the Linux distros on my old work system? Now as a baseline, I did run this monitor at 1080p instead of the 1440 that it is typically set at, just to try and keep the similarities as close as possible. Taking a look at the chart, you can see that I was able to run 3D benchmarks since both of these started on Windows, and the new system was running at about 88 frames per second, where the old system was running at about 23 frames per second. So you can see there's quite the discrepancy between the processors and the graphics cards, and we now know the gap that I have to close. So at tossing out that 2021 data, I was able to focus on the actual information coming from operating system changes on the old platform. As you can see, there's not really a consistent difference between the operating systems and the games. Pop OS ran control better than both Ubuntu and Windows, but Windows ran Cyberpunk better by almost a factor of 2X over both of the Linux distros. Now, because I had the Steam Deck, I wanted to use that as a baseline for my comparison on the Linux distros. And well, I was really surprised at how much better the Steam Deck ran than this system. And I think the difference is the AMD driver set. I ran the Steam Deck at unlimited frames per second, 60 frames per second lock, and 30 frames per second lock. And really, I had no discrepancies between the three games and their average frames per second. Each of these games outperformed not only the Linux distros of Pop! OS and Ubuntu, but also greatly outperformed the Windows system in some situations. Now, I was pleasantly surprised with the performance that the Steam Deck had against the laptop. I thought they would be about even if I was lucky. And now I know the Steam Deck was running a lower resolution, but the enhancements that Valve has made with Proton and with SteamOS 3 seem to really be taking. I'm looking forward to trying SteamOS 3 when it actually comes out and loading it on top of the system. Maybe that will help, you know, maybe the driver sets, maybe the changes that Valve has been making will help run this a little bit better on Arch Linux instead of a uh, Debian based, but we'll have to wait and see. So what am I to do? Should I run Linux on this and take the wins with the losses or should I keep it on a Windows platform and just know that this is going to be a shelfware hardware very shortly. And the answer is kind of wishy-washy. I really liked how fast Linux boots and how fast it functioned because it is a lighter weight operating system. With that said, there are plenty of other gaming platforms that don't quite run well on Linux. I'm looking at you, Blizzard, EA, Ubisoft, etc. Now, there are some games that are starting to come out as Linux and Windows native, like the Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge that ran freaking awesome on every system and I love the game. But ironically, there's other games that have stripped Linux support like Rocket League and have been moving backwards. Now, there were some other difficulties when I was running Cyberpunk on the Linux distros, the pop-up for the launcher would not come up because of .NET issues. It seems to have a workaround for the Steam Deck, but for the Linux distros, I actually had to put uh, launch arguments in there to skip past the launcher and go directly into the game for it to work. Also, I found that running some distros on Linux, it was a little bit funky trying to find new drivers for NVIDIA. 
With Ubuntu, it had the actual integration inside of it to be able to click, install, or pull a new driver. But on Pop! OS, it seemed to be a little bit wonky and I had to use somebody's third-party distro to be able to pull down a driver set. Now, I don't see myself running Linux on that gaming rig anytime soon. I use it for working gaming, but I use it for a lot more than just Steam games. And because of the limitations of other players in the market right now, I just don't see myself making the cut over it. We are seeing huge strides. I hope the Steam Deck continues to be successful and push other developers towards Linux because it would be a fun idea to cut over to a Linux distro someday as my everyday system. So I'm not a Linux guru by any means, so I'm looking forward to others' tips and tricks and tweaks and whatever else you have that makes gaming on Linux even smoother and more compatible. Whatever you got, toss them my way. I am gonna say that the standard user is probably not ready for Linux gaming yet, or probably even Linux day to day, but it is getting a lot closer. Well, I appreciate you all watching this video. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'm really looking forward to any feedback that you all have, as well as the Steam OS 3 launch for PCs. I want to get that loaded on this laptop before I use it for the next project I have in mind. So stay tuned.